intention for today's Mass is for Magdalene Hostin, birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather together today on the Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us consider the great charity of Mary in going to see Elizabeth and the great charity the Lord has in coming to dwell among us for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that, faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your great greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, let love be sincere. Hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones, exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, do not be wise in your own estimation. The word of the Lord. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Among you is the great and Holy One of Israel. Mary, who believed that 
that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, most blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. I think we're inclined at times to speak, to think about, to preach even about our faith in a very public, at times even a very cosmic way about the, the battle between good and evil, the inbreaking of eternity into human history, and even the way the scriptures so often reference the wider public uh, sphere surrounding those events, the, the rulers of Nineveh or of Babylon or of, uh, of Herod and Pilate and Caesar Augustus and so forth. But the reality is that for most of us, most of the time, our faith is lived out on a very intimate, personal plane within the sphere of family and friends and work and, and the, the environment where we are at any given time as we seek to find our path through life to heaven itself. I think that's why the, the, the episode of the visitation has such resonance in, in, in scripture, in liturgy, in our own personal devotions. It's one of the mysteries of the rosary. It's the mystery of the rosary where we pray for an increase in the gift of charity, such as Mary exercised toward Elizabeth, and of humility that Elizabeth returned to Mary on this occasion, as we see so beautifully depicted in this intimate domestic scene. These are some of the themes that we reflect on on the Feast of the Visitation. And I would like to cite uh, a, a poem by Rainier Maria Rilke on the theme of the visitation, uh, an early 20th century poet writing about the visitation itself. It was still easy for her in the beginning, only when climbing she would be aware of her heavy womb. And then she stood breathing on the Jewish mountains. But not the land spread about her, but her fullness. And while walking she knew Nowhere was there such fullness as hers. And she felt compelled to feel with her hand the womb of hers who was a further along. Toward each other they swayingly stepped and caressed the dress and the hair. Each woman was filled with sacred life and safe and at ease with the relative. 
And though the Savior was hardly in bloom, the Baptist in the cousin's womb already leapt for joy. Let each of us also leap for joy, knowing that the mother of our Savior will always bring Jesus to us when we are in need. And like his unborn cousin John, may we learn to invite others to come to know him. Let us pray. We pray for our entire church that like Mary, we may continue to bring Jesus to others. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are expecting children at this time, that they may have a healthy and safe pregnancy, always rejoicing in God's gift of life. We pray to the Lord. For all those who work to preserve and save life in every way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, the needy and the poor, the despairing and the desperate, that they may find in Christ their hope and in each of us a model of living out that hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of today's Mass, for Magdalene Holzer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, hear the prayers we offer and grant us what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the May Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our offering of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you were pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to the earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim your death and Lord, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth, Saint Teresa of Avila, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as 
We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John the Baptist leapt with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to remain tuned to our station for the devotional prayers immediately after the conclusion of Mass today. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to savor what is right and always rejoice in his consolation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Lord Jesus Christ, who has glorified your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, immaculate from the first moment of her conception, grant that all who devoutly implore her protection on earth may eternally enjoy your presence in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ, who for the accomplishment of your greatest works have chosen the weak things of the world, that no flesh may glory in your sight, and who for a better and more widely diffused belief in the immaculate conception of your mother, have wished that the miraculous medal be manifested to St. Catherine Labore. Grant, we ask you that filled with like humility, we may glorify this mystery by word and work, amen. Immaculate Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord Jesus and our mother, we have confidence in your powerful and never failing intercession, manifested often through the miraculous medal. We, your loving and trustful children, ask you to obtain for us the graces and favors we ask during this novena, if they will be for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. You know, O Mary, how often our souls have been the sanctuaries of your Son, who hates iniquity. Obtain for us then a deep hatred of sin and that purity of heart, which will attach us to God alone, so that our every thought, word, and deed may tend to his greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial, that we may recover by penance what we have lost by sin and at length attain to that blessed abode where you are the queen of angels and of men. Amen. Our prayer to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Virgin, Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we unite ourselves to thee under your title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your motherly affection for us, and a constant reminder of our filial duties toward you. While wearing it, may we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son. Most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior, keep us close to you every moment of our lives, so that like you, we may live and act according to the teaching and example of your Son. Obtain for us, your children, the grace of a happy death, so that in union with you, we may enjoy the happiness of heaven forever. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.